Welcome to WO50 Women Over 50 Embody Wisdom and Wellness. Hello, my name is Corinne and I'm here with my BFF, Eddie. And today our topic is where peace resides, finding calm here now. Now, during these challenging times on the planet, where is the peace? Where is the peace? Let's find it. We're going to tell you where to find it. Mm -hmm. Yep. We had a really nice conversation about, um, you know, how to find it, how busy our lives are, how stressed the world is, how to tell the difference between, you know, what's coming from outside when you're, when you're feeling stressed from watching too much news and what to do about it. And it felt really peaceful talking it to did. you didn't it <laughs> it, did. it did it felt really peaceful like i i felt this undertone of peace during this conversation that's good so if you need some peace this will be a good yeah. podcast to listen to good we hope you enjoy it and find peace peace hello my bff hello my friend my bff ken how are you doing i'm good Good. I'm excited. I'm heading to Canada soon. By the time this podcast posts, maybe I'll even be back from Canada. <laughs> yeah, the beautiful, beautiful weather here that we're having. <laughs> it's great. It's beautiful. And you get some cooling temps from the heat in Nashville right now. A lot yeah. going on in the world, too. Mm. So There's a lot cool. going on in the world. We thought we'd talk today about... Uh, the importance of, you know, finding, finding peace here now. So the title of top today's topic is where peace resides, finding calm here now, because I, people keep asking me, how are you doing? You know, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm golden. I'm great. I have not gone anywhere since I got back from India in late February, early March. I don't know if I've ever been in one spot so long in many years enjoying my garden. And I just feel like I'm able to do my practices every day, have a really peaceful life. And then when people come in from the outside world that are all stressed out, or they'll call me on Zoom or FaceTime and you need some peace, I'm like a little haven here at Ivy House for some peace. And, uh, and, and every day I talk to people about, you know, just the only moment that exists is right now. The only re reality that it is exists is here now. And people yes. get confused about that because they think it means complacency. Like, well, what if, if you don't worry about what's going on in the rest of the world or worry about stuff, then what, you know, who's going to change it? And um, yeah, I have thoughts about that. How about you? Oh, same, the same. The, the, there's always chaos in the world. There's always something going on. And, you know, I, I think the solace comes from sitting, trying to find peace within yourself in it. Because, you know, you know, you know, when somebody's really upset and, and you can feel it and then you get wrapped up in it. And before you know it, I mean, this was say years ago, mm -hmm. I, I catch myself more now because of awareness, but you get caught up in it. And before you know it, you're, you're red in the face and you're on the path and you're just as much involved. And now I realize that, and I watch people doing marches and different things like that. And uh, for good causes and, and, and wonderful, you know, their hearts are, are there. The compassion is there, but I feel now I can sit back in peace and I don't have to be in that March. I don't have to be out for that cause. I, I can sit and hold kind of compassion from where I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm, do you know yeah. I mean? Oh, yes. No, staying in your own lane, I think is important because people will say, well, I feel guilty that I'm not people just say that in India, I feel guilty that I don't want to go visit the orphanage or whatever. Or I don't want to go to this, you know, yeah, peace march or go to Washington and hold a sign. And I'm like, you do you like there are mm -hmm. people that love doing that, that they're yes. that's their, you know, I've got a couple of friends who they they're labeled themselves activists, and that's what they want to do. And if that's your role, that's awesome. You know, yes as long as you're taking care, hopefully you're taking care of yourself. But if you're not drawn to do that, and maybe you're drawn to write a check, maybe you're drawn to not turn on your TV at all. It's like finding what works for you. Mm -hmm. And then you're shining your light and you're putting good vibes into the world. So I, th I think there's times to have difficult conversations about what's going on in the world and, or about what, 
you know, politics or whatever it is, there's certain times to have those conversations, conscious, compassionate conversations, but not like bitch sessions, you know, yeah. like having, you know, if I don't have that many of those conversations because I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not in a place to make policy. I can't, you know, you know, so I, I feel like I can best serve the world by sitting here at Ivy house and welcoming people in and, you know, people that come here, feeding them to get us, sending them stuff from the garden, giving them tools mm -hmm. to take peace back with them. That's my role. Yeah. And I, I feel that way too. Yeah. yeah. In my, you know, office, when people come in and they're, they're stressing about something, it's whether it's something they're eating or, or their life, or, you know, there's a major life changes happening, major stressors in their lives. And it's just finding that, that place to, to kind of recenter, you know, just to go, okay, got to get my thoughts together around so many things. And when we have the news influencing our day, things that happen outside of our, our own little world, right? It does kind of bleed over. And that's the time we have to, you know, check in and go, do I turn the news off now? How many times do I need to hear this again? You know, even this is so wild. I was at my mom's and I hadn't seen some of the news clips and, and, you know, I, cause I knew from nine 11 and experiences before when you get caught up in it, it really affects your day. You don't realize how much it's kind of creeping into your cells and the stress and you're feeling it. And, and it's affecting our, our being. And my nephew's standing there and he's, he's like, you know, there's been some other presidents this has happened to. And he starts talking about, you know, I said, oh, you mean John F. K. And, and, and he goes, well, there's been all kinds of things. I mean, there's a guy, Harris. And I went, Harris, who the heck is Harris? So I get on my computer and he was born in 1793. I'm going, oh, Okay. Thanks for that information. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh yeah. There was conflict there too. He says to me, <laughs> I go, you're, you're too smart. Yeah. He loves economics and world events and, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we also are affected by these things, even if we don't turn on the TV, we're certainly affected with them. When we turn on the TV, that's more, you know, obvious and you have a choice to how long you want to watch it for and, and how long you want to keep it in your consciousness and all that. Um, but even if you don't turn on the TV, there's an underlying stress that's only going to be building as the year gets closer to November, you know, here in the U S is that's going to affect the whole world because everybody watches the U S mm -hmm. and, um, and of course all the other things going on in the world, we do feel it because we're all connected. We're all one. And so it might show up like irritability or fatigue or overwhelm. And you might blame the person closest to you. Cause that's usually what happens. And so it's really important to keep grounded, keep in the a moment. So if you, if you feel a need to talk about these things, that's, that's fine, but limit yourself to the discussions, uh, limit yourself to maybe having solutions to the discussions and then come back to your life to, to the moment. I remember, um, uh, uh, this, this friend of mine who she, she listens to the podcast, so she'll know it's her, but she was at a Leia retreat and she was pretty upset when she first got there. And, and so she's one of the first ones to sit up with a and, and she's like, she's so, and this is a couple of years ago. She was so worried about the world, the state of the world and everything going on. And, and LA is just like, okay, so how's everything right here now? <laughs> you know? And she was just like diffused it because we were on retreat in this beautiful place, you know? And so our mind can really get taken away. So yeah. we're not saying don't be concerned about the world issues because we do have to all, we are part of the world and we do have to, you know, be aware of what's going on and help where we feel drawn to help. Mm -hmm. But also you, your life is craving your presence here now. Yeah. And, and sometimes you forget your own self. You're busy tending to our elders, our friends, our kids, the grandkids, our, our partners. And then we go, Oh, where did I park myself? You know, where I yeah. forgot about me. Yeah. 
falling into bed at night, exhausted, and that day starts again tomorrow, you're the boss of your own schedule. Nobody's going to create space in your schedule, but you. So you've yes. got to create space ahead of time. Take a look at your week, see where you can take things away mm-hmm. and have time for you for some quiet time to, to refill because it's, it's a lot easier as we know to feel overwhelmed when we're not centered. Mm -hmm. So when we're pretty grounded, we're more resilient. You know, it's kind of like a healthy tree, a healthy tree that's flexible and blown. And when, if a storm comes along, that tree is fine. But if a tree doesn't have the right nutrients, it's kind of half dead and stuff, a street storm comes along, it can tear it up at the roots. Yeah. And so we're like that too. It's like when we're solid and, and, you know, looking after ourselves, our nutrition, our state of mind, our sleep, our, all of that, then we're more resilient to be able to handle the natural challenges that come either personally in our lives or in world events as they happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to practice that every day, every day. My life is so full and even some events I did last week and you know, had some incidences where actually I was forced to take time to myself because I needed my body to heal. And, and like, it's, it's amazing. And often we say, don't wait for an accident to, to, you know, stop you, Mm -hmm. make sure you're working it in. Cause then maybe we'll have less. I don't know. Does that, (laughs) we only know by how much we put it into practice, but I, I'm, I'm doing a bit more of that definitely in my life, making the space for, for, you know, breathers and time and yeah. Yeah. Transition. I'm a big person with space and transition time. So Mm -hmm. looking at your day and making sure you have transition time, like even when I'm in between clients or, you know, whatever it is, busy day, I make sure you know, if I've got to work late into the evening, then I've got three or four hours to relax later in the day before I have to work late in the evening or whatever it is. I look, I'm, I'm, when I'm creating, cause I create my own schedule. I've always done that actually, because I've always sort of worked physical. Where, where is it before I was doing massage and stuff uh, mm-hmm. or teaching yoga, it's all physical stuff. So I would look at my schedule and make sure I had always space and transition time. Yeah. It's important. And as, and especially now too, with world events, you know, making time to just shut it down, turn off the news, go outside for a walk, like regroup and, um, you know, really watch what the pressures are because I I've spoken to so many people since what's happened here in July now of 2024, the news events, um, they, they are peeled to the TV. They're like, oh, I got to see what's going to happen here. And I got, I'm like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You need to re-engage into your life, into yourself. You know, put on a really nice movie for yourself. Grab your book again. Start journaling. Do your yoga. <laughs> yeah. Meditate. Like, just stop the, the, the train of thought that's, because, you know, even our fight, fight or flight, stuff starts to happen. We get Mm -hmm. into this cortisol thing and we wonder why we're so exhausted because we're so overstimulated by all this stuff going on. And, you know, it's, yeah, it can be overwhelming for the mind and the nervous system, all of it. And so if you feel like, even for me, when I'm, if I have been, you know, watching a series or scrolling for a little bit too long, I'll feel, I can feel a little agitated. I'll go right out to my garden and spend like an hour in my garden. And then I'm backgrounded again. You know, yeah. I, I have, luckily I have time and space to be able to do that. And I, I know fully what it likes is, is like to feel like peaceful most of the time. And so mm-hmm. when I'm catch myself falling into that hole, you know, I, I remedy that. And there's all kinds of, everybody has different remedies. There's, you know, exercise, there's going for a walk, there's being in the garden, there's spending time with your grandkids or your kids, um, laughing to the ocean, Mm -hmm. walks in nature. Yeah. The greenhouse. I love getting into my greenhouse and it takes you away for a little bit, you know, allows you get into that oneness with, with your beautiful plants and, and 
Yeah. That you've been nurturing and growing and feeding and then you're eating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's an important time to connect and, and, and support and talk to, to our friends and our loved ones and, and ourselves, especially mm -hmm. going through all this stuff in the world right now. Yeah. It's challenging. It's mm -hmm. challenging. And people say it's, it's, it's the worst of times or whatever, but I, I don't believe that. I think it, there's always been challenges on the planet. There always will be That's part of being human. Mm -hmm. It's just now more in our face because of social media and everybody having phones. It's a little bit more yes. in our face. And so yes. it is up to you to get it out of your face. You well, know, it's a and, heightened awareness, isn't it? Yeah. It's an awareness that we never dreamed we'd have 50 years ago. No, you know? that's for sure. No, it's, it, I mean, I'm having conversations with people. I mean, just recently, even about um, the identification of our non-gender diversity and the language with specifics around it. And I'm going, you know, my mother will be 89 this week. And, and, oh, and by the way, she's doing great. One of my, our listeners on our last podcast, she goes, your mom had a heart attack. I'm like, where did you hear that? She goes, on your podcast. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, I better give everyone an update. She's doing great. We're having a birthday party for her <laughs> in a couple of days. <laughs> you know, but in this, in her lifetime now, she gets to, you know, enjoy drag performances and and the beautiful language around um diversity and neurodiversity and how we are is like, she's, she stopped labeling, right? There's no, like, it's amazing how it's fallen away. And that's a lot of, you know, a lot of thanks to technology, social media, or showing, Oh, look, you, this does this, this phone, this computer, this, we have access to so much information. So the download is so fast now that, what took a hundred years is not taking a hundred years anymore. Mm -hmm. You think about like mom has put in, in her lifetime, like into her brain, <laughs> the changes. Yeah. The changes of what she was like when she was a little girl to how it is now. I mean, how it's it now. Yeah. Yeah. To it's, even the, the judging for all of us, even to, to place judgment on something or have an opinion about anything. Now it's like we almost we're letting the language even fall away. It's like now we're sensing it more. Ooh, I think I hurt that person's feelings. Did I say it the right way? You know, it's like, oh, mom, that's really good to have that awareness around that. You know, this is <laughs> mm -hmm. same with me. I might say something to my daughter or granddaughter and they'll correct me pretty quick. But we know it's said from our heart space. It's said, mm -hmm. you know, it's not malicious. It's. And that's the softening in our own selves and to each other on this planet right now. We just, it's, it's big bites of the elephant right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the, you know, the title of the podcast is where peace resides, you know, finding calm here now. And Eddie and I talk about this pretty much almost on every podcast. You know, we keep saying this over and over again, and I've understood this in in layers and in a deepening over my life you know the peace resides the only place where peace resides is within and yes. so if you're feeling chaotic in your life and even in your body or your mind there is peace there you just have to stop yeah you just have to stop and you know, even your, your mind, it's like, you can't really stop your mind, but you can tell it to stop and focus on, you know, what's in front of you and take a breath and just know that the peace resides right in that breath. Yeah. No matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're very fortunate to, I mean, I'm here in Canada, you're there in the U S we're fortunate to, to be able to center somewhere and find peace within ourselves and mm -hmm. and sometimes it's the the bigger things like the mountains or the ocean or our gardens that that we can get into and it kind of you know gets everything in check again for us yeah and you know why that is i i have conversations with that every day to people because people will say well i love being in nature i don't like 
being in this concrete jungle. And I'm like, the reason why you like being in nature is because you're present in nature because you're so in awe at how beautiful everything is. You aren't worried about all your life's problems when you're in nature. Mm -hmm. It's not the nature. It's you. Yeah. You know, and people will say, but no, I love, you know, I love just going to the lake or I love skiing or whatever it is. And I'm like, yeah, but the common denominator is you. It's not the activity. It's you. Yeah. And, and if you went into nature and got dropped in the middle of the forest and you didn't know there was bears that could come out at any time, you'd have no fear. But as soon as somebody tells you, you know, there's bears, so keep your food in the tree. You're like, okay, maybe we'll go to a different part of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so true. It's all perspective. It is. And some yeah. people would go, bears? Oh my God, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see them. And others are like, what? Are you kidding me? No. no. Okay. Bye. Yeah. We're all so different. We're all so unique and precious. Yeah. I'm not a big camper. So I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not into having the food up in the tree with the bear net. <laughs> no, no. I was never a big fan of that, but you know, I, mm, lots of people are. Oh yeah. Plenty. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's the, what we wanted to share today was just, you know, we know there's a lot of things going on in the world that are cause for concern, cause for worry, cause for unrest, but you do have peace within you. And I encourage you to, you know, to sort of own that and find that in the different, different points, different day, th points throughout the day, different moments of your life by just pausing and taking a breath and feeling that peace that's in each moment. It's why people love to go to yoga class. I, I'll take people through a little mindfulness present moment, even a guided awareness to the body. And then I'll say, okay, what word do you feel? And I'll hear peace and, um, you know, quiet and, um, softness and stillness and all these beautiful words. And I'm like, okay, that is you. That's not the yoga. Yeah. It's not the yoga. It's just the fact that you've just stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But do you still have that poem? Cause I feel I like do. maybe, maybe Eddie had, had found this poem that we'd talked about at the beginning before we got online about doing it. And then we were concerned it was a little long, but I feel like we've maybe set this up now and we've talked about the importance of being still and stopping. So yeah. if you have the time right now to listen to this and, and you can even pause and, and really tune in to this, it, it is not a short poem, but it's not like super long, but it is quite beautiful. Uh, it has a few verses and it really spoke to me today, actually just before the, the we started the podcast and, um, the poet is Pablo Neruda, and he wrote this beautiful poem called Keeping Quiet. And it says, now we will count to 12, and we will all keep still. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment without rush, without engines. We would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales, and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, victory with no survivors, would put on clean clothes, and would walk about with their brothers in the shade, doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. If we were not so single-minded about keeping our lives moving, and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth is teaching us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now I'll count to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. 
Beautiful. So we hope you spend some time in quiet today, this week, and notice if you feel overwhelmed and try to tune in. And remember the podcast we had, I think I've posted already, maybe not, three fingers pointing back. Yeah, I will have posted it by now. But whenever you're pointing out and concerned about other things happening in the world, just look at what's happening here now with you. Thank you for listening. We love you. Peace.